Well, fasten your seatbelt, get ready for another hatchet job. At the very least, the BBC is going to sow the seeds of confusion. This whole idea that the Royals are at war with the BBC over the tittle-tattle... <laughs> what kind of word is that, tittle-tattle? Uh, <laughs> over the tittle-tattle documentary. The Queen, Charles, and the Cambridges unite in threat to boycott Corporation over show alleging briefing wars between William and Harry. Exactly what does that entail, briefing wars? I have a feeling that no matter what is ever is said or done, that somehow they are going to show how strong William is, how angry he is, and how incontinent with rage he is. I would say incandescent, but... He's full of it, so I'm going to say how incontinent with rage he is. Because that's the way they have to big him up to make him seem like he's this decisive individual who knows exactly what he wants and when he wants it. <laughs> that way he comes out smelling like a rose too much. I have a feeling about this one. You know, I'm going to reserve my judgment, but I just have a feeling about this one. I think that it's not exactly designed to benefit Harry in any way whatsoever. This seems like they're trying to get back into um, Wilma's good graces. And the only way to do that is to, I guess, try to make him look strong and decisive and inc incontinent or in incandescent. The bravest thing I've ever seen William do is declare that he slept rough with a black man. Oh, he loves to tell you that he slept with a black man. If I hear him say one more time <laughs> how he slept with a black man, he slept rough, um, which means that he closed his eyes, waited until the cameras were gone, and then probably went home after that. Yep, that's our Martin Luther Cambridge. No greater friend to civil rights have there ever been. Oh, I had a scheme. Martin Luther Cambridge. <laughs> and the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Anyway, don't know when I'll see it, if I'll see it, or even if it's worth watching. But I'll wait for the reports to hear exactly how they have demonized the Duke of Sussex and how this is proved once again that William... Because think about it. Why Why now? Why now? Why is this important now? I mean, I know the BBC has a long history of documentaries, but every time you watch a documentary, they tell the story a little different. They come up with another person. But of course, then you have to see... Long-faced Camilla Tomley spinning her web of deceit. And then, of course, there's <laughs> that little human troll doll, um, Angela Levin. I just wonder. Oh, my God. Why do they keep putting that? Both of them just... Uh, they just, oh, oh well, let me stop. But I know you've had this happen before. You're watching a documentary against all of your uh, better judgment. You watch this documentary and you're kind of getting into it. And all of a sudden, boom, there's Camilla Tomley. Boom, <laughs> there's Angela Levin. But Camilla Tomley, boy, I tell you, her face really fills up a screen, doesn't it? I mean, from top to bottom is, 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 Wall to wall, <laughs> Camilla Tomini's face. More face than you would find on the average person. More face than an Easter Island head. And let's face it, how much of this stuff does a queen actually uh, find herself exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis? I mean, she's got other things to do. I mean, either the queen is uh, very busy or she doesn't do much at all. But does she really have time to sit around and uh, go through the menu of the BBC to see uh, whether or not they're going to talk about her family? I mean, the Queen has been kept busy late at night with the help of a torch, or as we say in the U.S., a flashlight. Uh, she and her son have dug some type of escape tunnel, <laughs> which explains how she sprained her back. That's what the Queen has been doing in her off time. That in 
you know, writing checks for the... Oh, anyway, I'm not going to get into that. But things are going to get really interesting soon, I hope. Christopher Bowsey and, of course, Descent Bontano, I believe... Uh, am I saying the name right? Anyway, um, they're going to release a report soon, I suspect, about... Um, I, I, I don't want to say what it is, but um, I'll just put it here. Because this person isn't a black woman. She's a middle-aged white woman pretending to be black. Eventually, we will release a report on digital, what I just said. And the reason why I don't want to say it is because I don't want to excite the um, AI. Because that can cause all kinds of problems. And they get kind of twitchy about certain subject matters. Like, remember, I was trying to talk about Andrew and I could not monetize my video. Well, that's why. So, um, anyway, they are going to look into that because there are some sites, and I've had people in the comments section of Royal Sussex, um, moderators, you probably have known this to be true as well, where the face just doesn't seem to match. <laughs> The comment. And so um, they have been cast into the scrap heap of history as far as Royal Sussex is concerned. But these things are happening. Uh, they happen during the election time here in the U.S. They happen a lot. So um, sometimes just save yourself from these long, drawn-out battles with people because the person that you... Um, are exchanging words with may not be exactly the person that you think they are. And so they have come well equipped to try to um, demoralize you as much as possible any way they can or to try to lead to some type of exchange that may cause you to lose your social media account. So I say keep it clean. Try not to make it personal. And you should be okay. Say what you need to say. In the community section of Royal Sussex, you may have seen that little cartoon that I uh, put up a couple days ago about this very subject. And may I say cheers to Alex Beresford? Meghan Markle, he said, could have gone on Ellen, stayed silent, and her critics would have heard her say something and would still be talking about her today. The Duchess is keeping so many people relevant. Well, of course, I believe that he's speaking in regards to the fact that these uh, so-called royal reporters, the royal rodents, and of course, all of these so-called um, authors and wa royal watchers, they all have something to talk about. They all have things to do because every day whether the Duchess of Sussex makes an appearance today or whether she makes an appearance again two months from now. All of that time in between is filled in with something. No matter how... Cre I have to give it to them. They are very creative. <laughs> they are very creative. You have never seen so many people pull something out of nothing so often as one of those royal rodents. And, uh, of course... The, the guy that got driven off of the airwaves because of um, Alex Beresford and um, Dr. Shola, that person who we all know, um, I don't need to say his name, but that person, oh, people couldn't wait to hear his reaction about her being on television, right? Can anybody even quote his reaction? No, because nobody is listening. Nobody cares what he thinks. He has been rendered so irrelevant day after day after day. I mean, I almost forget about him sometimes. That's how irrelevant he is. I mean, Megan has gotten people so bogged down in uh, worry and concern about how popular she is that even today there was an article that said how a 200-year-old constitutional amendment can stop Megan from running for U.S. president. Seriously? Seriously. 
Do you really think that the Duchess of Sussex is even considering running for president, let alone if she decides to do that, there's something that you can do to stop her? You know, maybe, just maybe, maybe they see something that we don't, but I can't possibly think about what that is. But um, you know what? There's something about name recognition, and that name recognition goes a long way. And as we have seen from U.S. politics, um, that is something that people should consider. People should think about that. Now, I don't see that in the Duchess of Sussex's future in any way, form, or fashion anytime soon. I just don't see that. But if it keeps some of those um, haters up at night, then what could I say? Uh, <laughs> Megan for president. <laughs> oh, and I've been working on a new name, uh, well, nickname for the Cambridges. Bed knobs and broomsticks? No? Too far of a stretch? Bed knobs and broomsticks? That was a uh, Disney movie, I think. Okay, I'll work on something else. <laughs> How about Camilla, Queen of the Desert? As far as I know, uh, Camilla is still out in the desert. And I don't know if she's gotten my memo about the moisturizing. But um, she's still out there, so... I can't wait to see. <laughs> I can't wait to see her when she returns um, back to the UK. I really cannot wait to see that. I know I've been particularly messy the past couple days, but you all know how it is on Royal Sussex when I'm just like um, really enjoying the whole experience of the Sussexes. And then here they come with all of that nonsense. You know that rubs me the wrong way. You know that. But wouldn't it be fun if we find out... <laughs> wouldn't it be fun if we find out that one of those accounts where someone is pretending to be a strong black woman, wouldn't it be like a real kick in the rubber parts if that turns out to be... None other than the Duchess of Cambridge. I mean, even through the keyboard, you can hear some mumbling going on. <laughs> Wouldn't it be something? Oh, please let it be. Let it be. Let us find out that uh, Mumbles is the one behind the keyboard. Oh, I pray that that's so. You know, and I, I love the nickname Mumbles. But ever since I um, got the nickname of Jazz Hands from uh, Celebrity, which, of course, is another great podcast. Ever since I've seen Jazz Hands, I cannot unsee it. I mean, that is just epic. That is so perfect, Jazz Hands. I mean, because let's face it, when she's talking, those hands are just swelling and reaching for words and... <laughs> <laughs> and I think I think that the hands is like a control method because if she's throwing her hands around then she's not grinning and 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 grinning you'll notice that just watch for it you'll notice that when she's moving her hands she's not grinning and grinning but here's a little coded language that I noticed. Kate Middleton looks younger and more stylish at the Royal Variety performance thanks to her casual curly hairstyle <laughs> and her fresh English rose complexion, experts reveal. Now, when they say English rose, you know that's code for not Meghan Markle. It means acceptable one. Accept it. So uh, some people are a little jealous because, um, I, I mean, I have to talk about it. They, they're saying that uh, Ellen DeGeneres was being a little shady by letting us know that she just casually spends time over at the Sussexes and that she casually, 
hangs out with Archie and and the Lily Diana and the the, the Sussexes and I you know she makes it sound like she has a run of the house. I mean as though she's used all how many bathrooms? 56 bathrooms. Um yeah, like she's used all of, of 60 of the bathrooms and such. So um <laughs> I think they're up to 60 bathrooms. I have to uh, go and look at one of the tabloids so I know for sure. But, um, yeah, so they, they're letting us know in ever so subtle a way, like with a bullhorn on top of the roof. Yes, Ellen spends time with the Sussexes. And yes, we are a little envious of her. Okay, so uh, one more thing I want to talk about is that I know some of you guys are on the Facebook I'm not going to share the picture myself because I think it's very inappropriate, but um, there is the photo out there that um, someone has spotted Prince Harry, uh, obviously in the first class section of a Dreamliner. And I'm only saying that because I could see like the safety card in the back of the seat and it says 787. And being an aircraft buff, I kind of know these things. So... Um, anyway, that is what, um, is being reported here and there. Now, much to my surprise, this is not in one of the tabloids. I think the person that posted the photo may not have received any compensation for it. I hope that's the case. Um, is still a very inappropriate photo, but, um, I won't share it, but it is out there and some of you all have seen it. So please comment if you have. But um, these things happen, and the photos make the rounds, so I don't think I'm telling most of y'all anything you don't know already, because it is on the Twitter and on various Facebook accounts, so if you're in any groups on Facebook, then most likely I'm assuming that you have seen it. If not, whoops! <laughs> but I'm, I'm not going to share it. I'm... I'm I don't like the paparazzi photos. And even the photo that I took of the Duchess of Sussex at the Intrepid, I've noticed that the photo from the paparazzi standing right next to me eventually made it into print, and I'm not even going to share that one. So um, if you guys do come across these photos, okay, fine. We all want to see what the Sussexes are doing, but please do not share them. And whatever you do, do not share photos of the kids. Um, if it's an authorized photo, fine. But if it's unauthorized, we don't want to perpetuate that stuff. And yes, uh, when I see them on the Facebook, I do call people out about it. I, I do. Um, especially when there's a doctored Photoshop uh, image of the Sussexes or the children. Uh, that really, really bothers me. So, um, you guys... And also, I'm going I'm to say one more thing, too, about that. If you belong to a Facebook group, there are some Facebook groups that are truly there for the Sussexes. But if you find out um, over time that the groups that you belong to are sharing these paparazzi photos or that the person who, like, you know, some of the names of the groups seems to imply that they are from the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. And that is worrisome because it's nothing illegal about that. But the thing is, some of those groups, I've seen some things where it looked like they're only there trying to get money from people. So all I can say is be careful. I mean, there there has been people trying to donate to Archwell. Archwell doesn't take donations. And so there have been people using the name Archwell to solicit donations from people. So again, be careful. Harry and Meghan won't join the Queen at Christmas. Couple turns down invitation to go to Sandringham with the rest of the royal family for the festival. Which is cool because uh, the Cambridges only show up about half the time. Not that we care what they're doing, but they only show up about half the time. It doesn't matter that they're there or not there. The point is, they have a beautiful home in California. That family is not that close anyway. Those pictures of people on the balcony not facing one another doesn't really reassure me that they're in particular um, close 
relations with one another. I think they splinter off into generations like uh, Harry and his cousins. I think that's how they kind of relate to one another. But um, that kind of uh, closeness and togetherness and bonding, it just doesn't exist for that family. So, y'all, please, um, when you see that, just ignore it because that means absolutely nothing. It means nothing. So I just want to remind you guys, the Sussexes are really just getting started. They are just getting started. And no matter what comes from that island, and no matter how many people are trying to tarnish their reputation, believe me, believe me, the way that the young people were able to fight for Britney Spears, and not all were so young, but the young people... They, they do not like a bully. You always hear me say, because I cannot stand a bully. I hate a bully. These young people are not playing that game. And so the tabloids are doing their best. They're doing their best. And they, they're not going to rest. But when it comes to the truth, neither are we. And in particular, the young people, they will get to the bottom of it. So... There's not much interest from the young people in any of this stuff that has to do with the royal family. But the story that is going to be told in years to come about how the Sussexes met and fell in love and they escaped that institution, that's timeless. That is timeless. And it's a story that will be told again and again. It's a story that a lot of people, in particular young people, can identify with. And so that will resonate for years to come. And so the Sussexes will go down in history as being one of the ultimate love stories of the ages. And with all of the manufacturing, with all of the purpose-driven dribble coming out of the tabloids. They can't even manufacture that for the Cambridges. Even the people that hate the Sussexes show little or no interest in the Cambridges. That's what's so amazing is that for all of the destruction that they're trying to throw at the Sussexes, you can't even pretend like the Cambridges even notice each other. I think the reason why Catherine the Great has pulled her hair back is to make it seem like she's interested in him. And of course, <laughs> and of course for him, they're putting him in turtlenecks to make it seem like he's turning his head toward her. When we, <laughs> well, we both know, or should I say we all know, nothing could be further from the truth. Nothing. There's there's no closeness, no togetherness. The main girl, Catherine the Great, um, Catherine uh, the Great, who is the future queen of England, the one who is going to single-handedly lead the British people into modernity as far as the royal family is concerned, she can't even stomach looking at her own husband. The photos don't lie. How is it you can have all of these beautiful photos of the Sussexes? Okay, sometimes Harry doesn't smile as, as much because Harry's a soldier and he's protecting his queen. So Harry is not always going to smile. But as for the Duchess of Sussex, um, she's so engaged with the moment and she can smile because now she feels protected. And so between the two of them, Whenever they are together, whenever they glance at each other, they just ignite with passion. But you don't get that from those other two. The other two is it's like a couple of cardboard cutouts. It's like mannequins. Well, at least one of them. <laughs> so that's just something that the British people are going to have to live with. And the young people are going to ask the question in the next 10, 20, 30 years. Why are we paying our taxes on them? The queen receives a lot of goodwill from the people simply because she's been there for so long. I mean, there's not many people, if any, 
in all of the United Kingdom or in the world that can rem remember a time when she wasn't there. And especially, uh, there's few people and fewer people who can remember a time when she wasn't the queen. There's not many people who can remember the coronation. I mean, there's still a lot. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot. But there's fewer and fewer every day. The queen may live another six years. I mean, her mother lived to be 101. So much to my surprise today, I noticed that there was an image of Andrew very prominently uh, displayed on someone's desk. <laughs> and anyway, I hope that this is just a start of things to come. Like this is like letting us know that there's more material out there that we don't even know uh, exists. I can't wait to see it. You know, one of my favorite uh, videos is the one where Andrew's at the townhouse in New York and waving that little fat, clammy, sweaty hand outside the door. <laughs> Toodles. <laughs> Toodaloo. Uh, pip, pip, cheerio. Toodaloo. That is like one of my... <laughs> On my worst days, when I see that, everything is all right. When I see Andrew waving that little fat, clammy, sweaty hand out of that door and looking left and right like he's so clever. <laughs> I'm telling you, on a day like that, life is good. Whenever I see that, I'm okay. And they said the Sussex is blindsided the queen. Um... At least they don't have her up all night trying to dig that escape tunnel. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, you guys, stay tuned. Um, it's going to get interesting. Can't wait to see the report from Bot Sentinel, even though sometimes I know I say uh, sent Botano, but it's Bot Sentinel. <laughs> Look at that. I'm so excited. I can't even say it right. That's it for now. Please like, subscribe, share, donate, etc. If you would like to make a donation and you don't know how to help support this channel, you can go to the comment section where you can find links to the Patreon, the PayPal, and the Cash App. Thanks for watching Royal Sussex.